you have a life, you give a life advice for other people. That's your resolution. Yeah. It's thoughtful, yeah. Chase. Yeah. Don't Tell me give a fuck. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, Let's get I'm into kind it. of good at that. Exactly. All right, folks, we are back. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Ready Step Low Podcast, episode 175, the last one of 2019, heading in to the roaring 20s, Chase. Can you believe it? Some people are actually calling the, 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 the 20s, are trying to call the 2020s the roaring 20s, and uh, those people can kiss my ass right off the top, right off the top. We're all getting old, and we're going to die soon. Uh, <laughs> it's, a very, uh, it's a very festive spirit for the holiday, for the new year. We're all getting older, and we're going to die soon. <laughs> But happy New Year! Happy New Year! Though, happy people. New Year! Yeah. Uh, what did you do for Christmas, bro? Oh man, yeah. I haven't talked to you since then, right? Yeah, because we talked right before Christmas. Oh wow! Um, the Christmas thing went over to the parents for a few. For a few. All right. Um, did, did, my, did, did they my, judge my, you? Did they your parents judge you? They give you, uh, or, or were they? Or were they did you have like a fun, nice Christmas? <laughs> It was okay. It was, right. it was okay. A little bit of judgment. Just, just a little bit of judgment. Yeah, yeah. We're we're <laughs> Eritrean conservatives, so there's always judgment going on. I know. Well, that's why I asked. You know, my yeah. uh, my family was just happy I came home. So <laughs> we did have a discussion. I did have a discussion about my mom about uh, uh, gay people, which was interesting. You talked about gay uh, people with your mother, huh? Um, well, I she talked. And she did, I talked, she did, she did How did listen. this come up? How did the conversation about gay people come up? Uh, there was a commercial, like... <laughs> what, Smurfs two guys sucking dick? What happened? Sm- <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it was watching, like, the Smurfs. It was a commercial with the Smurfs. Okay. And then uh, and then she got into... I don't know. I don't know. It was, uh, the commercial came on with the Smurfs, and then we got into, like... It always comes down to, like, religious shit with my parents, you know? Yep. Uh, and, you know, and then... And then she got on the, her soapbox about religion. I got my soapbox about the Bible. The bi- the paper of the Bible should be recycled. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, I'm sure she didn't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I said we should probably, you know. Because I told her, I was like, you know, the amount of books that get printed for the Bible, you know, that's a Best lot of Best-selling book of all time, dude. Best-selling book of all time. And you know what I found out recently is that some Bibles are actually copyrighted. Actually, most Bibles are copyrighted. I think apparently I looked it up. Only the King James version is like, I think like completely not copyright. So like it, it, you know, no one gets royalties. But every other Bible that's, that's that's printed out there, somebody is getting a royalty for it. And what I want to know is, is Jesus getting his piece? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> no, dude, I mean, look, I mean, so some church. I mean, like not that not that I'm all about donating to, to any churches because I feel like a lot of them are just doing that to protect priests, particularly in the Catholic Church, as we talked about, but. The Bible is literally sold like billions of copies worldwide for fucking for 2,000 years now, roughly 2,000 years. Who is getting all these royalties? I want to know. I want a breakdown of who's getting a piece of the Bible action because I know Jesus, well, cause I said no one's kicking up to Jesus. I'll be honest with you. I've never paid for the cop for the, the copy of the Bible. I've always got it for free for somehow. Somebody bought Yeah. Well, the church gives it out, but the church pays for them. They don't get it for free from a distributor. Right, right, right. So, listen, I mean, like, listen, yeah. hey, as much as people want to say it's about religion and, you know, spreading the good book, the word of the good book, man, fuck that. It still costs money to manufacture a book. Somebody's getting paid to do that shit. No one's just printing books for fucking free. That's just, that's just never going to happen. I think they need to go back and write it like the old fashioned way with a pen, like the feather pen. The feather pen, son. Dude, yeah, like, dude, back in the day, only the priests could read and write. Like, back like, when it was all Latin and shit, like, they were the ones that, like, no one could read the Bible. Because it was in whatever fucking ancient Latin or whatever, and only the priest could read it, and they would give you the interpretation of the Bible. That's like, that's that's why it was like such a big deal for the printing press and, and, and like the like the the Protestant Reformation, like sure, that, because sure. the book because the book was the Bible was able to be mass produced and people were like people people's literacy rate went way up, so they could read the Bible for themselves. So that's how like the, that's how like the Catholic Church I think uh, helped the split of the Catholic Church with the uh, with like Protestant religions. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. So the only 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 the Wow, only they could. That's what it. gave them power, bro. I mean, like if they're the only ones that can read the Word of God, be like, oh man, the, the, God speaks to them directly because they're the only ones that can read it. It's like, well, you know, yeah. people are gullible. You know, what, people are gullible. You know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? Uh, it's just kind of like it's kind of like back uh, how they actually there was like with African Americans, like with slavery. You know, they you know they did it was against the law for like to them to read. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. So, which you know, if you you know, it's power. You know, so if you don't 
if you don't read, you're not informed. You don't get, you know, you don't spread communication, and then information doesn't have spread. Yeah, exactly. So, how do you how do you organize if you, if no if nobody could read and write? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, especially back right. then when, when sending letters was the only form of communication they had. It wasn't like you know the fucking telephone was around. So if you can't read or write, you can't get you can't like organize people in like the next village, next town, next the, the, the fucking next the next farm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just made it harder. Yeah. Just made it a lot, obviously just made it harder for them to 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 get you know get out from underneath uh, slavery. And and then yeah. post you know post uh, post Civil War Jim Crow South bullshit. You know? Well, post and, and current literacy slavery uh, to degree. Uh, yeah, literacy rates I think are pretty close. Oh, I've I've obviously gotten much better, but of course uh, you know as, as Not any. With me. As, well, you can read, dude. Come on. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You I can't read well, to. but you can. Read. Yeah, <laughs> but you I could read. read. Well. No, no I could read very well. I just don't know. I just don't. You choose you know not to. No, it's not even that. <laughs> I just, I have a focus problem. Uh, I, have I, a see. Fo- I have a focus. Yeah, that's really what it is. Like, I have a focused, uh, a focus problem when it comes to like reading. Like, I just can't. Um, I, I like, I have to. I, I, when I read a page, like, I have to read it three, four times. How many to actually? How many pages can you read without stopping? I don't know. Probably the same way how I can bust a nut. I don't know. Like, just what keep, does that just mean? keep going. How you bust uh, a nut? Just you just keep going until you can't do it no more. I don't know. Fucking. Well, that's why I asked you how many, how many how many pages would that be? Probably once a day, one page. <laughs> one page. One. <laughs> Sorry, let's get my one. notebook here. Um, I don't know. I never tried, but I probably should. I've um, never tried. <laughs> You've never tried to read consecutive pages, so you wouldn't know. <laughs> that's fucking. It's fantastic. Oh, sorry, uh, here. But which, 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 which is uh, you know, I did, I did finish one book this year, which was good. What book? Uh, uh, on writing with Stephen King, the one we talked oh, about. Oh, you did finish about. it. You did finish yeah. the book. All right. Yeah. There you go, it. Chase. Starting off even before the New Year's in, you're getting off on a little roll here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's on and popping, dude. It's on and popping. Twenty twenty. I know. But, yeah. Uh, it's on. So you didn't get what you get for Christmas, dude. You didn't tell me. You said, you went, you, you said you went home. Your mom was talking about gay people, and you were uh, trashing the uh, the good book. But the, you didn't yeah, tell, you got it's, socks, son. They give you another blanket. Because it's it's never it never ends, bro. It's always <laughs> consistent with my pops, bro. <laughs> he got me wool socks. I'm like, you know, and he got me. He got me uh, V-neck white tees. That's a good one, though. Those are useful items, son. Wrong size, kid. But you exchange that. That's fucking. You know, it's it's a little bit more work on your end, but you get you get you get what you want out of that. You get some mm-hmm. you get you get some value out of that gift. Um, and that's it, huh? Wool socks. Yeah, just wool socks and a V-neck and V-neck in a, in a package of V-neck white white shirts. Uh, what did you get and- your family? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm home, aren't I? That's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> you got me, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it cost me a fucking a little little fortune to get home. You, well, yeah, you uh, you flew back to New York for the holidays. Yeah, after, I just like, went for a couple I mean, days. He was, like a, he was in New York. He was in New York like a few weeks back, and then you flew back to New York. Yeah, so I, like, just, I went. I came back here for like five days, and then I flew back for the holidays. I, I can't miss Christmas, you know. They, uh, you know what I saw that was year. cool. What's that? You know that uh, I saw that uh, that you 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 fucking like was it you or you rented like a like a like a cool van or something? No, no, no. That? That's, so that's my buddy. You know, have you met Soul? You've not you've not met Soul yet, or have you? No. Okay, my buddy lives in San Francisco. He converted. He bought a Sprinter van, a Mercedes Sprinter van, and he converted the whole thing into like a uh, like a camper. Um, and the theme he chose is Japanese tea room. So he's got this dope ass like wood finish, and those benches fold out into a bed. Um, and he his wife and he and his wife like camped across the country for like the last month, and then he's staying back east to go skiing up and down like Maine and New Hampshire and shit. Uh, and he's gonna just be living out of that bad boy. That's pretty cool. It was fucking dope. That's pretty cool. We got That's pretty cool. Yeah, he he, he has a uh, he has like a little refrigerator in there, so he bought. So he doesn't drink, but he bought uh, he bought uh, Jesse and I a bunch of drinks, and then we went out and uh, had a good night. Went down to the comedy cellar as we as we normally do on Christmas Day. I take in my, the van. Yeah, the van? oh yeah, that thing fucking, it, he could park it in the streets, son, that shit is dope, it was, it was sick <laughs> That's awesome So, we were, so cool. Jesse and I were drinking and smoking in the back And uh, we pulled up to the, com- pulled up to the comedy cellar, went, went and saw the, uh, the 10 o'clock show at the Underground And then we had some fucking Korean barbecue and cruised back Who did you see on the show? Uh, Jared Freed hosted and, uh, fuck, I'm gonna draw the, uh, Nick Griffin who fucking murdered 
Vlad Kamato, who fucking murdered. I'm trying to think who else was on the show. Uh, Michael Fiore destroyed. There was two other comics. I'm forgetting their name, but it was a fucking great show. We had a great time. Uh, it's a little annual thing we do with. Uh, I do it with my brother and uh, my buddy Saul. We went to college with. Um, it's fucking fun. We had a good time. Good, and the man. van and the fucking van made it all made it made it uh, even sicker. You know what I'm saying? Like rolling in style on that thing. He had the beats. Yeah, it was going. like a black. It was like a black Mercedes type truck, right? Like yeah, yeah, man yeah, yeah, type yeah. thing. There's photos of it on my Instagram if you guys want to check it out. It's uh, I just posted them a couple of days ago. Uh, and yeah. actually, you can follow his account, uh, the Ryo Van R T H E R Y O V A N. That's his account on Instagram. They did like the whole build out for the van. If you guys want to yeah. follow, check that out. Uh, and of course, uh, Saul is the owner of High Grade Partners, who is our sponsor. And they have, a whole, right. they have a whole new batch of fine flower for us, Chase. I took a couple. My, my uh, soul brought a bunch to my brother, um, and I grabbed a little sample from him, but I'm going to get a whole fucking bunch of it myself when he's back in California. So shout out to High Grade Partners, the official, the official sponsor of Ready, Set, Blow, keeping me high. I'm stoned right now on his weed. It's fantastic. Good. It's fantastic. We should, uh, we should, we should take a... Um, uh, we should kind of like go to San Francisco and kind of take a walk through... Of, uh, oh, dude, yeah, fuck yeah. The, the flower plant there. Oh, well, he moved, He has, he has an indoor-outdoor grow now uh, yeah. in his home grow, and he's, and he's got a few projects going on. But then, he's, then he spent a lot of time putting that van together. So he's got, like, he's got, he's got the, uh, the marijuana growing operation and this van going and, like, a side constru- uh, no, a construction business. So he's a, he's a busy guy. He's a good dude, and he's fucking killing it. He's just, living he out of a van. I should live out of a fucking van, he dude. He could probably rent that. He could probably rent that van. I mean, I don't think he wants to. He, that's his toy. He wants to play with that. Um, but I All guess right. he could. But you can, you can buy those things like for retrofitted online, man. I should have fucking done that with my money. Those things are expensive, man. But now thinking about it, it's like fuck. If I, if How that, much they cost? You think? Uh, you can get like a fully renovated one for like a hundred and ten, like 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 a, like living quarters, you know, all that shit. It's a lot, but it's cheaper than a house. You know, house a house sets you back half a million dollars, maybe more. You know, right? So and it's, and, it's, it, and, it, and it's your car. You know, so I fucked up. I should have taken that. I should have taken some money and be like, all right, let me put a down payment on this and just live in it. But like a fly, fly one though, you know, like like I mean, obviously yeah, it's course. hard to explain to a chick You're like, hey, you want to come to my van? No but if it's ain't. real fly, you if might have a fly, shot. You might have a not, shot. I, I would, I would, I, if I would, I would tell the girl, I would tell the girl straight up from the beginning, like, listen, I live in my car, but it's a sick ass fucking car. You should come see it. And if she does fucking, if she's into you, why not? Right? You could actually probably finesse it too. If you if you built up a good Instagram account for the for like for the like for your for your van life account. And you're like, yeah, you know, I'm doing this thing, you know, this is, I'm living this adventure. You want to, you know, and ch- you check out my Instagram page and you have all these dope photos of you in the van and fucking dope spots. You're like, oh, that's adventurous. Right. So you might be able to swing that. But if you had just a fucking straight minivan with a mattress in the back, bro, like an air mattress, you're fucking, pff, you're living, you're living, I mean, it's talk about struggle city, you know? But if you had a right. nice dope van, I think, I think you could pull it off and not look like a fucking loser. There's a lot of people doing oh, this these days on Instagram. My buddy's doing it for basically, I mean, you know, and he's, uh, but I'm he's got his shit together. So. I'm pull- I'm, pull, I'm pulling it off right now, poor. So I'm good. I'm pull- <laughs> <laughs> pulling it off, poor. <laughs> I'm pulling it off right now, poor. So a van is just is just an added added uh, added added an added condiment. An added condiment. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah. I've never heard of, I've never called condiment. <laughs> what the fuck? Condiment, man. You know the condiments. A, a condiment on life. No, the condiment, man, like the mayos and the, and the ketchup. I know shit. what a condiment like, is, but I, I, I haven't heard it used in that fashion. Well, I mean, now you're asking for too much. I don't know. What uh, you're <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I, don't know how to, I know what the word means right now. <laughs> Until I can use it. <laughs> of course, I know what the word means. I just can't use it in the sentence. <laughs> Well, you have to tell me times, Randy. You have to tell me when you what you have to tell me when you need for me to explain something, which is ne- which is never, <laughs> which is never. Just, like, which is I'm just, glad I got stoned like, for this conversation. What does that mean? <laughs> oh man, uh, well, dude, what do you do for New Year's, bro? That's the big thing coming around the corner. Everyone's talking about it. Fucking New Year's overrated. But uh, what do you do for New Year's? <sighs> man, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of driving. We're gonna try to make some coin. I got some. Oh, nice. Yeah, we, we, we got rent rent coming up this week, so we got to make some good money. Uh, some bills that need to be paid. Some some money that needs to be some debt that needs to be transacted. Uh, you know what's, you know what's funny about that, Chase? Is that that's probably what I'm going to do too? Because <laughs> I fucking hate New Year's. It's like eh, right. I can drive around. I don't mind it, dude. I've been doing it the last couple of days pretty consistently. I don't mind it. 
if the money, the, the, question, money the money sucks. The money. For, if it were, if I made three times as much money doing it, I'd be like, all right, I would try and make it work with just this and comedy. But uh, the money's fucking terrible. But it ain't that bad. I, I was telling Jeff, it's kind of like it's kind of like people watching, but they just get well, in your car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You just you just chilling, man. Play some music, fucking, you know, all that shit. I don't do much talking. Yeah. They don't seem to mind. I get tipped. You know? Yeah, yeah. So as long as you get as long as you get them there safe and. Your your car, the car is clean, doesn't smell like shit. You probably would oh, get a five well, star. That's one thing I do take pride. They, they have remarked on, oh, it's a nice car. Is this new? I'm like, no, 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 it's a used car. But uh, you know, you got to keep it clean, keep it fucking smell right. I don't, you know, I've never smoked weed in the car, so it just smells, it just smells like when I bought it. You know, it just thinks like, yeah. Um, oh, you're you're very fucking. Um, you're, I mean, you're you you're, you're you, you like to keep a clean. A oh clean yeah, no eating in the car. Too. I don't play that game. You know, yeah. no, no bags yeah. of food and shit like that because it stinks. Um, it's funny you'll smoke in the car, but you won't eat. No, in the car. I haven't. But I haven't smoked in my car. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No, I mean, if somebody lets me smoke in their car, like, yeah, just light that shit up. I'm like, all right, if you want. Uh, but, like, but uh, I don't even smoke them. Like, even when I was living, I mean, when I was living at, uh, by the end of the time I was living in Boston at uh, Nine Hancock, mm-hmm. I, I didn't. Uh, I smoked out on the on the on the like on the fucking patio or on the the fire escape because I mean, I, it's bad enough I have enough weed. The room smells like weed. But like I don't need to be you know, smoking weed in my car. It's nice, you know I don't need that shit. But uh, so if I ever you know if I ever want to smoke, I always get out of the car. But um, uh, it's not that bad, dude. And I actually like driving at night too, because uh, the freaks come out at night. You know, it's, it, people forget. Many, people uh, forget that me, people uh, forget uh, there's uh, no walls <laughs> in your car. Like people think you're just invisible when you're the Uber driver, and they're just going about their life like you're not sitting there. You know, like getting judging their whole conversation with their friends and shit. How it's many amazing. numbers? Dude, you, it's how people many watching, but they get in the car, so I don't have to fucking go anywhere. I'm I, like literally, I'm, it's like entertainment. How many, how many numbers? How many numbers did you get? How many? How Zero. Many? Zero. None. Not yet. No. No. Right. I right. have gotten right. tipped in weed though, and I have, and, and and if I drive at night, someone's gonna buy me food. You know, so because uh, like you know, right around midnight, motherfuckers are running for the border, hitting Taco Bell or uh, uh, trying to go to Mickey D's. And like, oh, you know, if, if you stop at Mickey D's, we'll get you something. I'm like, all right, I can go for a Big Mac, roll over the fuck, <laughs> you know, what I mean? so get a little meal out of it. But uh, it's just fun. It's, I mean, like I said, I, I'm not a big people guy, but they, since I don't talk, to, like since I don't strike up conversations, say hey, hey, hello, like hey, hello, when they get in the car, they just kind of go about their business, and and it's amazing the kind of conversation people like. Like I said, it, as if you're not a human being in the car with them. You need to. I wouldn't say you're not. It's a like people taxi guy. cab confessions. Dude. I don't think. I don't think you're not a people guy. But you're not gonna. You know. I don't even think. Yeah, I think you're fine. I think. I think. I think. I don't know. I think you're fine. You'll be fine. Uh, be it's fine. been all right. So I said. Just, I wish. I just wish the money was a little bit better. Because then it wouldn't. You know. You kind of cruise around. You fucking shut it on. Shut it off. You know. Make it easy on yourself. But uh, it's driving for New Year's. I, yeah, I might do, do that. that. I might want... go to a party. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing for New Year's, man. I, I fucking hate New Year's though. I, I, we, I feel like we've talked about this before. It's just the most <laughs> overblown holiday. It's just a Wednesday, guys. Tell me, Tuesday tell me, Randy, night. Who gives a what, fuck? What? What? What do you like? Thanksgiving. So I told you. We, we talked about it two months ago. That's the number. That's the number one holiday. That's the number one holiday. Ah, there's got to be another one in there that you kind of enjoy. I'm sure. I mean, maybe the Fourth right. of July. Something easy. Something. Anything that's like a three or four day weekend. That's what, that's what you're looking for. You know, with no gift exchange. Uh, Fourth of July, right. Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? There's food, there's friends, there's drinks, and there's no there's no exchange of currency. You know what I'm saying? You just like you show up, you have a good time, you go the fuck home. Mm, Those are the holidays yeah. I like. And and New Year's is like that, but the hassle of New Year's, then they charge you fucking crazy money on New Year's to go anywhere. Yeah, People yeah. drunk trying oh, to charge the club. Everyone, and shit everyone like that. thinks like, oh, because because it's January first, somehow my life is shit. It's like get the fuck. Just a fucking. It's like I said, it's a Tuesday this year. It doesn't matter. If, it, New Year's Day could have been December twenty seventh. Like, it just because you know the Earth technically revolved around the sun in one full fucking one full cycle from the twenty seventh to twenty seventh. It doesn't fucking matter. It's silly. <laughs> so, but it always happens though. People always seem to. It's a recycled thing, man. People still like to go out, and they they will still do it. It's an excuse year after year, year after year. You know, it's like oh, you know, there's a club going on. You know, that club's like usually ten dollars to get in. Oh no, we're gonna jack it up to fifty dollars. Maybe that's you know, what my problem is with it. Maybe that's what my problem is. Is is the uh, is the concept that like there has to be a day, there has to be a reason to get drunk and have a good time on like the fact that everyone does it on New Year's. It's like, well, why don't you just treat any like you should be willing to have that kind of fun anytime. You feel like having that kind of fun. Like, don't make one day of the year that special from any of the others. 
because because they're all they, they all should be roughly equally important, right? Because a day is a day is a day. So I, I maybe that's why I don't like it. Like the fact that like everyone is so fucking corny that they make that day a, an important one when the day before and the day after are just as important. Well, on the def- on the on you know, like you can have that kind of fun. Like, dude, I've had a great time on a Tuesday. Like, I've had better times, you know, in the middle in, in the middle of fucking March than I've had on on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. Yeah, because it's just I, you know, because I had a, because I put together a good time. Like I, I don't know why they, like everyone stresses doing it on that day, and then they charge you for it. They charge you out the ass for it. It's fucking corny. They do. They do. They they try to get that money, man. They try to get that. They try to try to capitalize on every part of your life, even the fucking pockets. <laughs> you know, try to get. But on the other side, I can understand why people do go out on like New Year's too, because a lot of people don't see people regularly, so. You know, oh, you mean so like they, if they put together it, like a little trip or something? It, it's yeah, you, you know, I'm sure this. You know, I don't see a lot of people throughout the year, so it's like you know, people are going to be back in town to see their families and stuff. So if you kind of plan around that, you know, they let's true. all go out. You know, not, I mean, I'm I'm always going out, so I I, I don't think of it as like anything big because I'm always I could always do it, right? Yeah. I could always I could always go out. Like everything everything I do involves drinking people because we're in comedy clubs there's always people around you so always have the opportunity like, to you always have the opportunity to go out so it's, it's so having another opportunity to go out is not impressive it's not impressive to yeah. me as much as anymore yeah That's, versus someone who has like a nine to five job who has that, a well, that, is, that is a very good point that is a very good point it, it, it was a bigger de- all the holidays were a bigger deal when i had a day job because everyone had off on those holidays so we can make plans around them that that i think is what that that, that is a fair point like Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe I have taken for granted the fact that now, like for the last three, almost four years now, it's, it's been, you know, every day is a holiday. Every day could be a holiday because it doesn't, you know, every day is any day thing I want it to be because I have nothing, I have no responsibility, no responsibility. But right. uh, so maybe that, that that is a fair assessment. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little bit unfair. Thank you, Chase. To all the to all the to all the cube life people out there still fucking doing it. You know, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, jo- yeah. I'm I'm fuck, man. Go, go, fucking God willing, I'll be joining them again so I can get a real goddamn salary. You know, to struggle, but. Um, New Year's, yeah, I don't know. I think I might drive. Maybe there's a small chance I might go down Laguna or just hang in town at a friend's friend's apartment. But those, I feel like, are the best. Like, if, if I have to, if thinking about like the best New Year's parties I've been to, that's the thing. Like, I don't. I've gone out for New Year's and I hated it. The, but the, but if I'm going to do something for it, what I do like, what I do prefer to do is the house party. Go to somebody's house, you know, 20, 30 people, you know, friends, you know them. There's not that many strange people, you know. Out of the 20, you know, 15. You know, because five of their plus, you know, their dates or whatever. So you got to, you know, yeah. you got to make a little small talk with them. But otherwise, everyone knows each other. So you can get right, you know, you get right into having a good time and bullshitting. Uh, hey, yeah, you know, 15 of them and then five of them you, you fucking hate. Oh, yeah. Five of them, <laughs> all the 15 hate on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time one of them goes to the bathroom, they just trash them. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, those are fun. I used to, we used to go to my buddy, uh, my buddy Sean's house in, uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut. His parents had a, had a nice yeah, fucking yeah, home. It's, it's so, it's, it's. What's that? Was that last part? I'm sorry. Was that last part? You got cut off. No, so we used to. So I was was just thinking about uh, going to the house parties. uh, The ones I would go to uh, up at my buddy's, uh, my buddy Sean's place in uh, in Grand Shacket, where his parents live. Used to have a good time up there. He had a uh, like a whole finished out basement. We'd go party in and uh, have a grand old time. Yeah. Right before we got on the on the uh, on the podcast, you were telling me you had some resolutions. You you do resolutions? (laughs) Well. the, the whole idea of resolutions, I know we talked about this, I think last year's uh, episode, you know, I think we, I think me and you all could agree that I think it's all kind of full of shit yeah. to a degree. Um, you know, e- even though some people, you know, their aim, <laughs> their aim is like for good to like, you know, but yeah, but, any, any, but, any foolish tradition, any foolish communal tradition that is not questioned like New Year's resolutions is something I have a, a fundamental problem with as the listeners know by now. Right, <laughs> but, uh, but what people, people doing popular. This, what do you thought? About, what do you think about? What I thought about it was, uh, you know, we're so concerned about like what you know what we what we should do, and we try to itemize like the resolutions like for the following year that we should try to tackle. You know what we should do. I kind of like look at it as like I, I kind of narrowed things down to what people shouldn't do for resolutions. Okay, so you, so I, so Chase's resolutions tell uh, basically telling other people what to do. Let's hear. I love it. Yeah. I, I like well, I like the way you turned it on its head, Chase. I got some solutions for you people. You know, I am I am a finished product. I'm perfect, but you motherfuckers, yes. on the other hand, need some right. fixing. And here's what I say you should do. I love it. Yeah. I love and it. I think and I think all these these things that I these things that I listed uh, will help you lead 
to the promised land that you're looking for. All right, let's hear. The first thing is what people shouldn't do as a resolution. People who bring the dogs to work, okay. that's a no-no. No dogs to you know, work. No dogs to work. No. Don't, don't, bring, don't bring your dog to work. I got because, to, uh, oof, that's a tough start, Chase. People love dogs, man, and so do I. Yeah, I love fucking, I, I love fucking my bed, but I can't bring my bed to work either. <laughs> Chase, I think you have a disciplinary report that says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you got a termination notice because you brought a bed to work, motherfucker. No, I made the bed at the you, made, you, you, you built the bed at work. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So that's yeah, the first yeah. one. No dogs. Don't bring the dogs to work. No, leave the dog at home. Be got comfortable it. with your own skin. You know, if things are not going well, because people, I would assume that the reason why they bring the dogs to work is because they feel like some type of, you know, maybe anxiety or some type of like, you know, I, actually, I don't know why the fuck people bring their dogs. Well, why do they bring their dogs there, there are some people that have anxiety, but there's a lot of employers now that want to be hip and allow allow their employees to bring dogs to the office because um, they don't want them to have to worry about walking the dog or getting a dog walker, going home to walk the dog. By allowing their employees to bring the dogs to work, it makes the employer seem cool, but it also allows the employee to have to work longer since they don't have that responsibility at home that they have to go home to take care of. So. You know, employers try to make it seem hip, like, oh, we're a tech company, you can bring your dog, how cool is that, come work for us. But in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, they want me to bring my dog to work, they want me to bring mm-hmm. my fucking, they want, me to, they want right. me to be at work so I don't have to fucking go. They, they, bring your kids right. to work, bring your kids to the office, fuck it. It's like, yeah, so I, so I cannot spend time with them, I gotta put them down in daycare so I can stay up right. here making money for you. You know, mm-hmm. so there's, there's uh, I, I always have that uh, hesitation with dogs going to work. But it is nice to have a fucking, dude, dogs always brighten the day, man. I love dogs, man. Dogs are, I dogs are good people. I know. I know I'm not a fan of it. I'm just leave the dog because, you know. Well, you're also not a dog guy. I like dogs, dude, but I just think there's a I time know, and place man. for dogs. You were scared I, of fucking Reed at first, man. I was. I was. My but, but then I have some photos of you holding them. You got used to them. I loved Reed. You, you warmed up. I loved I just. It belong at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just think, like, dude, I don't want to, like, especially if I'm, like, allergic. Listen, it's not all about the you. You know, there's other people that, you know that are working there that you should like have consideration for. Let's say if I'm fucking allergic to hair, you know, but I have to deal with some fucking, you know what I mean? Like some fuck, you know what I mean? Like what the fuck? Dude? You know what I mean? You can wait, you can, you can wait six, to hair, so, 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 no, so no people can come. You mean fur, dog fur. Yeah. You know okay. Cause dogs, hair is like, everyone has hair. <laughs> then you can work what the fuck's between the difference between fur and hair? Isn't the same shit? I don't know. Maybe something with the dander. Let's let's go, let's Google that. Let's go. Let's go to the fucking internet and see what it can teach us right now. I'm stoned. Let me learn something new. Yeah, let's learn. Let's look up fur be- between. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a thing. Maybe fur if it's, if it's a short versus hair, dog. hair. Let's see what the fuck is up with this. What really ruffles my feathers is when people bring dogs into bars and restaurants. That really gets me fucking ticked off. That oh, really gets me upset. Listen to this, dude. The primary difference between hair and fur is the usage of the word. The hair of, of non-human animals refers to, is referred to as fur, while humans are said to have hair. So basically, hair is a characteristic of all mammals. So yeah, so it's the same thing. Okay. So it's just fur only refers to non-human hair, and humans Good. have hair. Awesome. Randy, 38, Chase, 2. Nice, <laughs> I'm moving up. <laughs> <laughs> You nailed it, dude. You nailed yeah, it. I'm, yeah, that's All like right. two out of fucking three so years. So like, you win that resolution. Now, now I agree with that resolution because, because you, won that, you won that round. I give you the resolution. So let's see. What, what else do you have resolutions that other people should have? What do you got for me? Uh, What's number two? <laughs> do not text and drive. Oh, that's one I can get behind. Don't that's text I can get behind. and drive because... I've, I've noticed, actually, you'll notice too, as you start driving more, you'll start seeing that shit. And those people just add on extra fucking issues on the road. Well, I, th- heightens. I think it's dangerous that I even have to deal with using the app when I like to, like, to, to start and stop the app. Like I find that to be distracting. Um, and I hear my phone chime when I have texts or whatever, but, uh, you know, at a stoplight or I'll pull over, you know, like, like, if, like, like after, after, after I drop somebody off, I'm like, oh, let me pull over, check my phone for a minute. But uh, yeah, doing it while you're driving, no, uh, not necessary. And also, dude, the fucking, like, if you want to text back, like you can like read the text at a light, 
And then they had a little button where, you, like, if nobody's in the car, obviously, uh, or if you want to be a badass, you do it with some passenger in the car, and like you respond, but you, know, you hit that little uh, that uh, text that speech to text button, so you record your, you know, just records what you're saying, and then you just hit send, man, fucking ready to go. Yeah. So it's it's, yeah. it's an unnecessary thing. I agree with that. Uh, to, all right, Chase. Uh, the first one you started off rocky. Number two, I'm down with. What do you got? What's number three? Okay, yeah, a little rocky, but we kind of, you know. All right, we're going one. I'll give you one for one. Let, let's see number okay. three. The, the, the let's let's see the tiebreaker here. <laughs> let's see. The pressure. The pressure's, pressure's on. on. The pressure's on. And last but not least, mm-hmm. what you sh- what you shouldn't do. Okay. For overall happiness, don't get married. Don't get, I think it's a resolution. I resolve yeah, not to get married in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't have kids to that too. Yeah, yeah. Just, cl- just clarity. Just you'll have you'll have a you'll have a really good sense of clarity. This is a problem. Being alone is good for growth, and a lot of people don't like to be alone. Not only they don't like to be alone, they have a hard time looking at themselves when they're alone when certain things are happening so i think it's an important thing where if you can just be your be it be by yourself for a while and that number one it's actually not bad to be by yourself there's a lot of like negative stigma where, that people put on us yeah, just because know, you, you are alone people uh yeah, like we've talked about it, man fucking people people like to project their bullshit onto you yeah well you know but that's it yeah so basically dogs dogs <laughs> That's a dude. That's a. I don't know, man. That's a tough one, dude. Would you rather if, if you're eating a fuck if you're eating at a restaurant and you're having food and there's, there's a dog running around? Come on, you can. You can. You, come on. Yeah, but on. Uh, I don't. I don't know, man. I love fucking fuck dogs. I love dogs. Yeah. That's why dogs. That's why dogs get away with it. You know what I'm saying? How about bringing how about bringing a homeless person in there and fucking like dude? dude it's statistically like, it's statistically proven people care more about dogs than other people in this country. That, yeah, that's a problem. I think that's an issue. That's a fucking absolute issue. That's a fucking, that's a crazy, that's just crazy to me to think like but that. The, but you know what? It, I agree, but then you think about how many people you dislike and how many dogs I don't dislike. You know, like, I lo- there's a lot, the, the, the population of people that I'm like, ugh, is a lot bigger than the, the population of dogs I go, ugh, to. You know what I'm saying? I guess you're right. Dogs are just right. dogs. It's hard not to like a dog, man. That like bites you or shit in your fucking living room floor. Like, but they usually don't do that. They just kind of hang around. You know, they're happy to see you. They love on you. They fucking they want to they want to kick it. You know, they fucking uh, they get you. They make you more active. Dogs don't fuck shit up. People fuck shit up. That's why people don't like people. I I, I feel like uh, it's a good point. It's a good you know what I'm saying? Like people point. people right, fuck let me, up let me, constantly. Let me, let, me put that, constantly. let me erase that. Let me. Let me New Year's resolution list. number one: fuck people. <laughs> Yeah, that's my news resolution. It. Fuck people. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. I resolve yeah. to, to. I resolve to spend less time with people in twenty twenty. Well, that that that's that's, that's impossible. Good. That's impossible. It's impossible. But but some people do do it though. Dude, like a recluse. I mean, I, dude, I was I've been watching. Uh, uh, it was popular on Netflix. Uh, Manhunt with Sam Worthington. It's about the uh, story of Ted Kaczynski. The Unabomber, who was living in the rural, in like a very rural section of Montana in a cabin with no electricity for 20 years, mailing bombs to people. Guy was a fucking genius, obviously a psychopath killer, but also like a legitimate genius, like a Harvard degrees in mathematics and shit. He had 170 IQ. And uh, it, it seems to be that if you really, really don't like people, you might get, you might do some weird shit like, uh, like bomb them, dude. I don't know. There's some people who are like reclusive like that and, hand, and handle, hand, handle solitude well. And there are other people who end up being like be, being forced into, you know, basically exile and they don't handle it well. And they snap like that Ted, that, that uh, Ted Kaczynski guy. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I, I saw a lot of, I saw like, oh, I, I could get down with that. But then I was like, Oh my God, the guy fucking snapped, started mailing bombs to people. You know, yeah. like, uh, I, I worry, you know, that, uh, <laughs> that my disdain for people would turn into a, uh, a fucking nightmare like that, but uh, I don't think I will. I think I'll manage. As long as you have some weed, I think you'll be fine. Right? Yeah, With, yeah, I think you. As long as you got some 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 nice greenery, you'll be fine. And uh, and Tech is since he didn't have any women. He he was a fifty three year old virgin. So uh, I feel like that. Yeah, that'll that'll fucking that'll make it. That'll drive any man crazy. I mean, could you imagine fifty three years without the touch of a woman? Holy fucking shit. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if there's if there's a if there was a uh, <laughs> if 
there was a, a test on guys to see how long they can last without having sex, without them going crazy. Um, what do you think? Well, dude, I mean, a lot, a lot of these people in the incel communities, involuntary celibate is what it stands for, the incel community. They, um, those guys are the guys they worry about too, because those guys, are, you know, I forget one of the mass shooters was was an incel, and he was like, I forget, I forget which one of them. There's been there was a dozen of them last year, twenty of them last year, so I forget which one. But one of them was like one of these guys who was like on these. Uh, the celibacy chat boards like talking about how he hates women and, and he was getting all worked up and you know and that negative energy yeah. fucking lashed out and he killed some people but I feel like so that's in, so incel means so incel means like in, involuntary not, involuntarily celibate meaning they can't get laid you know what I thought that meant I thought that meant I thought that meant like that's, it was like you have like you have a disease like an incel disease like you don't have that many cells in your body <laughs> I mean, I guess it is a form of disease, but I don't, I've never heard, you don't have that many. Everyone has cells. You know what I mean? You, like they're you know, short like, on cells? Like, like, like you're short on, like, you're limited, like you have limited cells in your body. Yeah, do you, do you know what cells. a cell is? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a thing that's a circle thing. It goes around your body, you know, has a nucleus that's in there somewhere. Mitochondria. That's the only thing I know. Right? <laughs> I mean, those are, those are the important parts, but your body is made of cells. Every, every, all living tissue is made of cells. So like your skin, okay. so you have billions and billions of cells in your body that, that compose the entire structure of your body. You're made out of cells. Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you remember you remember the important bits: the nucleus, the mitochondria, you know, RNA, DNA. That's how I've gotten through life. I just know. I just try to know just the, just the, just enough just to get through. They, just I mean, enough to get through. I, I, you, I'm sure you don't know what those <laughs> items do. The nucleus. The nucleus. The, oh no, the nucleus actually is the, like the, the control center of the cell. Oh right? shit, Chase is giving the science lessons. All right, good. Yeah, the mitochondria is actually the energy part of the cell. Would actually the powerhouse. Converse, there the you powerhouse go. of the cell. And well, uh, there, there's you know, other components. I forget the other components too myself these days. But yeah, uh, the pro- there's, well, there's the, you got the protoplasm, honestly, cell membrane, cell membrane, the protoplasm. Um, you know. Cryptocurrency, whatever the fuck it is, all that shit. So I can just push it all in there. Fucking <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh fucking no! Oh know. my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! I uh, oh dude, I, let me tell you. So uh, I was gonna fucking I wanted to complain about this bullshit. Um, I had so I had to. Uh, Got some nice gifts from the family, you know. Got got a couple pairs of Patagonia pants, a couple T shirts, just what I need. It's basics. They fucking they figured they they they, they nailed it this year. T shirt and the fucking uh, they basically replaced all the T shirts and all the pants I had. So you know, you know yeah. I put it back in the rotation. So I, I keep my fucking cartoon costume going. But um, there was some uh, <laughs> there was some T shirts I had duplicates duplicate of. So I was re- returning those for some other shit at Old Navy. Um, so I went. Uh, Went into Old Navy, returned a couple T-shirts, picked up another, you know, like a sweatshirt and a long sleeve shirt, oh, sh- and oh, they shit. asked me for my ID for my driver's license. I'm like, for what? Like, oh, it's the only way we can do returns. And I'm like, what do you need that for? It's like, well, well, right. I was like, well we don't need your ID. You just and you have the your, receipt, right? And you have the receipt. No, I had right? no receipt, but it doesn't fucking matter. The product had tags, and it was an exchange, so I wasn't, I wasn't trying to get cash back or anything. I just wanted to. I was like, here's these items, traded in for these items. And I'll yeah. pay whatever the difference is. You know, it's a swap. Like, you should, yeah. you should be able to swap product. You know, I mean, this is fucking standard fucking retail shit. But at right, Old right, Navy, yeah. they require you to give your whole fucking, your, your name, address, and phone number in order to do a return without a receipt. And it's just a way to get your fucking information. And I, like, I felt like, I really felt like, like, uh, calling over the manager, be like, look, you got to bypass all this. I don't want to do any of this. I just want this for this. And I don't care what you got to do to fix it. Because most managers can get through, uh, Basically, any sort of return at a, at a store, like you get, you get it to manage, and they're like, "All right, they don't have to go to corporate to get fucking permission to, t- to take product back." You know, they have they have that authority. Uh, but I know I used to work. I used to work at like Men's Express. I know the deal. And I was about to blow my lid, but the fucking the counter girl's like 19 years old. She's a fucking kid. She's just trying yeah. to work and make some money. She doesn't give a shit. She's just, she's doing what she's told. There's fucking people behind me. I'm stoned. So I fuck it fine. So I hand over my ID, but I could not believe uh, oh. I was I was forced into it. I, I was like, ah. Oh. Just, I just wanted to get out of there. So now, fucking Old Navy, what, what happens? What happens? I'm, I'm getting flooded with fucking promotions from Old Navy in my goddamn email, in my uh, inbox, in my email. I make, I always give them a fake email. Son of a bitch. Well, they, uh, yeah, but but now they have my address. They have all this information. You know, it's just fucking nonsense. Yeah. Ugh, they fucking sucking me into it. But uh, shout out to that that uh, that young clerk, man. She she looked like she's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, man. She was like fucking annoyed yeah. you to do it. Yeah, felt bad. 
She's like, what do you want me to tell, what do you want me to tell you? Oh, yeah, man, you should, you, be, you should be shopping something fuck else. you want from me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You should, you should have money. Get the fuck Bauer. out of here. Eddie Bauer. <laughs> J. Crew and fucking, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Saks, Bloomingdale's. Yuck. Yeah. I'm surprised that you, kept, you, I mean, it's good that, you, you know. You yeah. had, I think you had a similar experience over there, too, a little while ago. With Old uh, Navy. Was it Old Navy? It might have been. Oh, the, credit card. Let's about credit card. Yeah, they, oh, they always do that shit to you, man. All these, all these fucking retailers, they, they have to. I mean, like, this, this is the business they're in now. They're collecting your fucking information uh, yeah. to exploit it. It sucks. But uh, what are you going to do? Oh, man. You want to go? Uh, I, I, well? I, um, yeah, we can get, yeah, we can get to some stuff, bro. Sure. Yeah. I thought I had something. I thought I bought something. I'm trying to see that if I bought you something buy? recently. No, I didn't buy anything. I'm poor. Mm. I'm, I'm lying to myself. Oh, that's what Shit. I wanted to talk about. The lotto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. right. I forgot about that almost because uh, I, I saw that online. People were asking me about it. The fucking... So let me pull up the Instagram uh, post. Let me pull up the post yeah, you, po- you, you posted like, uh, like an Instagram thing about something about the lottery and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I want to hear you talk about that shit. Let yeah, because I've been trying. To, quick. I've been trying to. I've been trying to fucking press my luck with that man on the little scratch, scratchy, scratchies. Oh you know? well, this is yeah. This is this is why it's a bad idea. Oh uh, shit! Yeah. Uh, shit. Uh, so uh, according to Uber Facts, it says uh, if you drive one mile to buy a Powerball ticket, you're about eight times more likely to die in a car crash than to win the jackpot. So driving one mile to pick up a lottery ticket. You're more likely to die eight times over than actually win that jackpot, which we all know dr- driving a mile is not that fucking dangerous. I would I would take that risk. Yeah, well, this is what I said. I said the lotto is essentially a tax on the poor and middle class people. And if you want in a while, I'll explain it on the podcast. Uh, I posted that in my stories a couple of days ago. I was because mm-hmm. I, I don't know if we spoke we've spoken a lot about the lottery before, but um, but when I say people, it's a poor tax. People don't understand why because they don't understand like simple math. Basically, All right, so, so I'll break it down, I'll break it down for the people. Break it down, I'll break it down for the yes. people. This is the New Year's resolution: financial literacy. Here you go. Break financial literacy. Yeah, it's coming from a guy who blew all his money uh, to, pursue, <laughs> to pursue a comedy dream. So take advice from me. You know, take money advice from an idiot. Um, I uh, no. So so there's like about a one in 150 million chance of winning one of those multi-state lotteries. One in 150, one in 175 million, roughly. Call it 150 because it's it's easier. That's a lot. If you, the way expected return works is it's, you, you expect a return for an investment. So if I give you a dollar and I say, okay, here, get, loan me a dollar, I'll pay it back to you with 20% interest. Your expected return on that is 20 cents. One dollar times 20%, is, you, get, you, get, uh, my, you get the dollar back plus 20, 20 cents. You get a dollar 20 back. That's your expected return. Okay. If, you're, if the expected return on lottery is one in 150 million. So you're basically putting a dollar down to win for the potential, yeah, and your expected return mathematically is like point zero 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 one cent, because the odds of winning are so fucking low. So, mm. so it is, it is the worst bet. Like if you were if you were a casino, that would be the worst game to play, the lottery. Oh, gotcha. Like you have a better gotcha. chance of winning a blackjack than than the fucking lottery. Right. You have a better chance of winning on a, on, a, on betting on a sports game with no knowledge of the game than winning the lottery. So that yeah, dollar the, is basically you're lighting it on fire. The odds but, are so the odds are more in your favor to are kind of, so poor. That's that's why the jackpots are so big because the odds are so bad. So the expected that's like women. That's like dating a woman. Pretty much. <laughs> 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 I'm going with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't well, worked out for women, me yet. But you know, like a, yeah. you know, no, but you know. Uh, so so. But there are people who so like oh if I put twenty dollars I'll I'll increase my chances of winning by twenty times it's like yeah but even at twenty times you're it's one in sixty million that you're gonna win at that point if you, if you invest twenty dollars so it's so it's still not that good up or one in forty whatever it is the odds are still not that good so and the people that do this rich people well off people don't need to invest in the lottery because they don't give we a don't. shit because they're doing well already. Nope. Right? Yeah, we are. We sure are. We sure are. But it's middle class people and poor people are like, oh man, if I just hit that lotto, it'll make you know it'll make all these problems go away. As opposed to just investing that money slowly over time and building up something small. It's like slowly. Because they'll invest, like, like I said, I remember my dad would play like 20, 30 bucks a week in fucking lotto or whatever. It's like, what? Oh, my dad too. Put man. that Back shit away. Like, if they put away 40, yeah. 50 bucks a week for 20 years, making 5%, they'd have like fucking 35 grand right now that they don't have. They don't have. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they, they don't, people don't think like that because the expected return is higher on an investment like that than on the fucking lottery. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of push back on something real quick. Uh, it totally makes sense what you said, right? Yeah, it's and mathematics. It, 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 it's, it's, math. not, it's, not, it's not even my choice. It's, the, it's just the numbers. I, I'm, I'm just telling you what the facts are. Right. It's not my right, opinion. Right. It's not an opinion. These are facts. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, that, yeah, that's just what it is. But then I'm like, kind of thinking about it, like the people. You know, there's, there's people out there that that, that they're just willing. They're just willing to take that risk for that one. For that one. Of course. Win, for that of one, course. For that one win. And I equate that to a lot of that particular. That's the gambling gene, approach. dude. That's the, that approach with a lot of things that people do with their lives with other things. Like, for example, right? We're in the business of comedy, right? We're, we're doing comedy, right? We're taking so many losses. We're investing so much money into things for the I, for possible, for, for, for an unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Sure. So I can understand. I, so I think with gambling... I think if you just take, if you just remove that idea from gambling and you just kind of use that in a, in a different way, that's a little bit more positive. I think you'd be a better. I think I think you have a better you, chance. You're, of, you're, uh, saying, you're saying to use your to use your risk uh, to use your ability to, to your ability to assume risk for a higher return. Yeah, like if you're willing, I get what you're saying. You want, if you're if you yeah. want to be a risk taker, take better risks. The lotto isn't a good risk. And I yeah. agree with that. I, I agree. Yeah. Like, like, there are people who are risky, who are high, bigger people who like to bungee jump. These are people who like that adrenaline, adrenaline rush. But getting addicted to a to a poor mathematical, uh, to, like to, to to get it's like it's like, yeah, like you said, it's, it's like the, to get addicted to the worst possible um, r- set of returns, like gambling, as opposed to oh, I want to take a risk. Let me start a business that I know something about. Let me, yeah. you know, yes. let let me. Uh, you know, try to write a book that I've always wanted and see if I can get it published. Let me take that risk. You know, but whatever it is, um, right. as opposed to let me let me spend a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars at a you know at, at a casino and say oh, maybe I'll turn it to two hundred thousand. When you know the odds are against you, or worse, like I said, when you only have when you're only making a few hundred bucks a week and you're spending twenty dollars of that, like oh man, let me play it on the lotto because that, that might fix all my problems. It's like it's not. Right. The odds are fucking terrible. Don't do it. You know, like I I I I, I, used, to, I used to I played the lotto before when the, when the um, jackpot gets high or if if, uh, if I'm just fucking around with friends or whatever. But the way I think about it is like it, the, the old New York State Lotto. Um, uh, slogan used to be a dollar and a dream. Is uh, that was their that was their slogan? And and in my mind, that made sense, but for the wrong reason. They thought like, oh, you know, uh, let's sell the dream to them, and they'll pay they'll pay the dollar for it. What I thought about was like, oh no no, no. you're paying a dollar to daydream for a couple days before the lottery drawing to imagine what you would do if you won a hundred million. You know, like oh, it's just you know, here's a buck. You know, you know, it'd be fun to you know to fantasize about it for a day. That's different than spending twenty, twenty five, thirty, forty, a hundred dollars a week regularly on lotto tickets and shit like that. You know, like, yeah. I've played, you know, half dozen lottery tickets in a year. Like, oh, you know, here's, a, I'll put a buck down. You know, like, ah, oh, you know, you know, you know, let's see. But like, but to have, but to treat the lotto as like some sort of like investment strategy where like, I play every week, I play the same numbers and I, you know, I'm going to hit. It's like, you're fucking crazy. It's never going to happen. Stop doing it. You know, especially if you're broke. I say, like, I was, I would buy a lot of tickets, even though I was doing all right. But like, oh yeah, here's a buck. You know, cheaper than a cup of coffee, and I'll, like, oh, I'll get some amusement. Me and my buddies will talk about it at lunch for an hour about what we would do if we won 100 fucking million dollars. Like, that's that's like you're basically paying a dollar for a conversation. You know, like, or or, or a daydream. But you're, I had no actual expectation of winning. These people who play lottery every fucking week, uh, like I said, are usually middle class or broke. Can 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 much rather be much better off saving that money than fucking playing the lotto. So it's a, I feel like it's a poor tax. You know, yeah. rich yeah. people are not playing the lottery, son. It's only people like I'm. Sh- look, I'm sh- I gotta find the demographics. I, I guarantee you, eighty percent of the people that play the lottery make under a hundred thousand dollars a year. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, or some like yeah. the vast majority of them make less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's no different. It's no different than like you know, pre- you know, preying on the on the poor with other things too. You know, retail. Yeah. You know, yeah. me, you know, all the other shit going on. You know what now, I mean? Now, now the flip side. I though, always say, I always say that you know, the best investment. In terms of monetary values, is putting in yourself. Yeah, because sure. at least, at, at least, you know, at least if you, you're gonna, know, you're gonna know something about yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you, you're gonna know something about yourself, whether you, if you lose or win or whatever the case may be, something's gonna come out of it. <laughs> you know? Like, Absolutely. Oh, fucking a, lot of. I'm trying to think. There was a saying that I just someone told me the other day about money. Oh no! Here we go. Yeah. Something about if you you know 
I don't know. I don't want to watch it up. Never mind. No, I'll please do. <laughs> <laughs> please do. Yeah, something about if you follow, I don't know, if something about if you follow the money, you end up becoming the person you you, you are, or something like that. I don't know. I think I botched it. Yeah, because that didn't make so, any yeah. sense. But uh, that no sense. It's all right. Let's get to the news. Speaking of the lotto, I got a I got a lottery related story in the news here. Listen to this. A lot of related news story. A lot of related. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of related news story. Uh, it says a reporter won the lotto and seemed to quit her job on air. She later realized the payout was only fifty five hundred dollars. <laughs> Listen to this. Hilarious. Hilarious. A Spanish television reporter appeared to celebrate and quit her job on live television after she realized after she realized she had a winning lottery ticket. It was a decision for uh, for which she would later apologize. On Sunday, Valencia. Uh, community journalist Natalia Escudero was covering Spain's annual Christmas lottery called El Gordo uh, when she found out that she was the winner. The state-run lottery is the world's richest draw, boasting 2.2 billion euros. Holy shit, about 2.4 billion in prizes. Wow. Uh, it says nearly 1,500 people can have a winning ticket that pays diff- uh, different amounts. It says uh, the winning number this year was blank, uh, and Escudero is one of the lucky ticket holders to have the correct numbers. Uh, for a prize worth $444,000 per ticket. But the prize money can be split multiple ways, and many other people also learn, uh, also hit the same number. She said on air, I'm not going in tomorrow. She, she said, wagging her finger at the camera, Natalia doesn't work here anymore. Woohoo. <laughs> I feel so sorry for her, man. That's, uh... <laughs> the crowd behind Escudero jumped and chanted with her winning tickets in hand. She fucking quit on air. That's great. Yeah. So what can we learn from this? I, I mean, like, <laughs> don't fucking count your chickens before they hatch. Wow. Uh, it said, but Escudero would later learn that her share of the jackpot was only 5,000 euros. Hilarious. Oh, no. A subsequent clip the same day. Oh, no. In a subsequent clip the same day, Escudero made a zip, uh, a zip, a zipping lips motion with her hands and said that she had not been touched by the grand prize of lottery. Oh, no. I want to yeah. see if she kept her job. All right, so what the fuck? So, uh, so she basically, did. She, she is. Uh, oh no! It said uh, one thing that is certainly true. She wasn't. She didn't go to work the next day. Escudero started her holiday break for uh, you know Christmas and New Year's. Uh, it's unclear if Escudero is still an employee at the TV station. So shit, dude. She fucking quit on air after she thought she won a jackpot of, fi- of five hundred grand to find out it was only five grand, and uh, now she's uh, in a little bit of hot water. That's kind of fucked up, man. They're her empl- uh, she didn't curse on air or say fuck the or fuck the channel. They should, they should not fire her. I don't think they should fire I don't think she should keep her job. What do you think, man? Yeah, she should keep her job. Just the same way they should have kept they should have kept me for fucking sleeping. It's the fucking same thing. Very different things. She did her job. She just quit on air. You got fired for not doing your job. Oh shit. I'm okay. I must have missed something. All right. <laughs> she she quit. That's what I'm missing, Randy. <laughs> they should take her back, is what I'm saying. They they should they should not not take her back. Because come on, man. I mean, like. You know, I, that, that, I don't know how five hundred thousand dollars in Spain might get you a long way. So, you know, so she might have been right to quit her job and be like, all right, I'm gonna, you know, have a family and, you know, my husband's all right. We'll be all right for a while. But like, but if she's like, hey guys, I, you know, I didn't know the ticket wasn't a winner. I'd like to come back to work. They should take her back to work. That's fucked up, bro. No man, no man, no man. I <clears throat> listen. There's there's always a way to say something to get your message across. You know what I mean? There's always. You just got to deliver it in the right way. You know, you know what I mean? Like, you can get your message across, but there's a certain way that you have to say it, you know, it's at certain times. Especially if you're not in power, you know? Uh, yeah, well, she's obviously not in any power. So, but, uh, whatever. Like, just get another, you know, she got five, she got 5,500. It'll last her a little bit. That's like two weeks' pay, son. She, 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 she need more than that. 5,500 is two weeks' pay? I, don't, I mean, a fucking, I don't know. And so I don't know what she's mm. making. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wish I got 5,500 two weeks back. That'd be nice. Yeah. I, I wish I got the what's, same. What's her Instagram? I'll, I'll, hit her, I'll hit her up. I'll DM her. Maybe Escudero. Natalia Escudero. Mm. See, if she, see if she wants a date. I know. <clears throat> All right. Here's another one. This one's a little fucking weird. Indiana. I don't know if you've ever been there before. It says, uh, nope. Indiana woman arrested after her son, five years old, found inside a running washing machine. Oh. oh boy, here we go. What is that? 
I don't know. You heard that too, right? Yeah. What the fuck was that? It wasn't over here. Was that by you? It's a rate. It's, it might be a thunderstorm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was fucking loud, dude. I heard that shit from here. Yeah, um, that was the, yeah. It said, uh, it says a, uh, an Indiana woman has been arrested on child neglect charges accused of locking her five-year-old son on a running washing machine. Doctors found the boy slipping in and out of consciousness when he arrived at a hospital in wet underwear with his father on August 16th when the incident took place. Uh, it said uh, the doctors also the boy had sustained bruises and scratches to his upper body. Uh, after police uh, did an investigation, the boy's mother, Heather Oliver, 30, of Elwood, Indiana, was charged on December 19th with child neglect resulting in bodily injury. Uh, according to court documents, the, the boy's father told police Oliver called him to say that their son was stuck in the washing machine while, while it was running. Uh, the court document says Oliver told police he, t- he the boy had locked himself in the washing machine, according to uh, this woman, Oliver, who was the one who reportedly threw him in there. Uh, dude, could you imagine? Me? I don't even know. Can you toss people? Like, could you drown in a washing machine? Yeah. If you're a baby, yeah. If you're a little kid, yeah, sure. But I mean, yeah. five years old. I feel like the five year old kid would have been fighting his way out. Like if I was five years old, but yeah, you get me out of the fucking washing machine, man. It depends on the washing machine. These these old school washing machines, they can you know if they just fall in, I, you know the ones that like they, they spin from the top, they, and then oh, the water fills. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking it, the ones you climb in and you can just punch the ceiling out. You know, I feel like well, because not, it locks, it locks from the top. Yeah, but how strong is that lock? I mean, yeah, maybe when you're a little kid, you don't have the strength to break that lock. You know, yeah, you don't have the strength to, yeah. But what if it was one of those industrial ones that she's fucking putting them in the bang, bang, bang? That shit, that would have been fucked up behind that one. Dude, I used to get scared because my little one of my brothers, uh, my brother Danny, when he was a baby, he used to crawl into the, uh, the dishwasher. Right? We, we, we used to what? Want, we, you know, the old school dishwasher machines, you know, the, with the two Yeah, but those that water's hot as fuck, dude, and they, and they have steam in it. You can burn the fucking kid to death in, in, in one of those things. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't on or anything. Okay. We would watch him. We would watch him and kind of, like, be playful and shit, but... Well, you just, um, let him play in the, you just let the kid play in the dishwasher? That was his playground? Africans, man, you know? We didn't have that many toys. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? You know, play with the utensils, you know? <laughs> play, play, play while he's, he's making drums. What are you doing with the utensils? It was, you know, hey, I was just watching. He'd go in the dishwasher and play with the fucking so- the spoons and shit. Like, you know, and, you know, and I, all right. like, yo, mom, just, just. Chase is not, all right, Chase is not a sitter. <laughs> he was like, he was like one years old, dude. He was like one years old, man. Oh, you know. Let him play, let, yeah, him, but, let, yeah. him, let him play with the knives. Fuck it. It's funny. <laughs> 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 He's in the dishwasher. He, what, he would be, he just, dude, he, I have pictures of it. He would sit in the dishwasher, you know? It was crazy. Indiana, people put and then, Is that a way to discipline kids these days? You put them in the dishwasher? Call a little filthy beast and throw them in there? God. Dude, I, I, you, you, do, do you remember the show back in the days? This is probably like early 90s. You probably heard of this. Where it was a show based on weird accidents. Like it was like on NBC or ABC. Weird it was like, these, like it was like weird, weird accidents that people like died from or like got like... Like an alligator, like came into a house and like you know, ate the parakeet or some what shit. What is the name oh, of the right. show? Because I want to watch this shit. It was back in the days, man. It was like it was on network television. It was just like I always used to watch it. It was kind of like just weird freak accidents that happened to people, and then uh, and it was actual show. And you, it was just a fucking whole bunch of weird shit that happened to people, mainly white people. But it was just like a lot of weird. Shit. <laughs> well, I've heard a show like I remember they used to have a show like that on Discovery Channel, like. Uh, uh, they'd always have like uh, like reenactments of weird animal encounters. And yes, was, you know, and it was always like 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 uh, like oh uh, you know a, a boa constrictor so you know fucking yes. snuck, snuck into the house and ate the baby. And it's always, yes. it was always like in Australia. I feel like in Australia everything eats everything. It was yeah, you know, like oh, maybe it was based on like other countries, like like stories from like, Africa, you know, fuck, or, or fucking India, you know, a, a, a tigers hunting people out of a village. Shit like that, you know. Or it was, or I remember it used to be like nine one one calls. It was like a story of like all these stories from like crazy nine one one calls, and they just, they just reenact them. Oh uh, well, those 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 are always fun. Crazy nine one one calls. <laughs> the best, the best of all time has to be has to be the guy who who, uh, who called the cops on himself because he and his wife were too high off edibles. <laughs> do you remember that one? I remember that one. I that do one's remember tremendous. That one. I mean, we might have, we might have actually played that one on this podcast. It's so good. 
So good. Uh, all right, here's the last news story for the week. Lizzo bashes authors, an author's claim that she's only popular due to the obesity epidemic in America. Uh, so Lizzo continues her reign as the master of being unbothered after she effortlessly deflected criticism aimed at her ever-growing popularity just days after debuting on, her, on SNL for the first time. The Truth Hurts singer, who's 31, issued a stout response to a claim made by Dr. Boyce Watkins last week in which she maintained that Lizzo is popular only because there is an, uh, there is an obesity epidemic in America. Rather than encouraging people to do better, we are simply lying to them and telling them that they are just fine the way they are, the writer tweeted. Unfortunately, many of these people are dying from diabetes and heart disease. It took Lizzo three days to retort via Twitter, responding to Watkins, saying, I'm popular because I write good songs and I'm talented and perform high-energy hour-and-a-half shows filled with love. The only person who needs to do better is you. Uh, she concluded, keep my name out of your mouth and look in the mirror before you come, o- come over here. Uh, here's the attention you ordered. In, ad- in addition, Watkins referred to Lizzo as Tiffany Faddish. <laughs> All right, he won that round. Um, <laughs> while responding to a Twitter account. However, he walked back his remarks on Wednesday, amending his argument to say his real gripe with the pop star is her behavior, calling the performer a minstrel show. Holy shit. The eight-time Grammy nominee has yet to respond to the follow-up comments. Earlier this month, the singer-songwriter addressed a social, on social media an outrage that quickly com- uh, commenced with she was twerking at a thong, blah, 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 blah. Dude. So I, this guy, ha- I don't know who Boyce Watkins is. It's funny to have a picture of Larry David. But uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. But his, no first, his first comment is not wrong. There is an obesity problem in this country, and there is a problem with heart disease and diabetes because of it. Yes, man. It's been happening for many years. I know, and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, does he need to be pointing her out and, ca- and blaming it on her to some degree? No, I mean he can I mean, just, just say that and not have to worry about her. But uh, there is there is a part of her of her appeal, a part of Lizzo's without question, part of Lizzo's appeal is the fact that she's a plus size woman. I mean, it, it has to be. Well, not only that, she she welcomes that. She brands yeah. it like that. She brands. Yeah. She, 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 yeah. So yeah, and that would be know. that would be like that would be like uh, Cardi B trying try to talk about how she's not a slut. All of a sudden, it's like, dude, you, you became Cardi mm-hmm. B because you were you were a stripper, and like that was like the like the thing about you that everyone thought was you know like the, the like that's the backstory. To all of a sudden not claim your backstory, it's like what you know like Lizzo is a part of a popular without quite look, she's obviously talented because people love love her music. I'm not a big fan of that song; it's kind of annoying to me, but she's definitely talented. She I, I know she can play instruments and shit, yeah. and, 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 and and that's a major part. Of, that's a major part of her popularity, but part of her brand now. Is without question being plus size, which is fine. Oh yeah, but no, but it's, know that, but know that if you're going to put that out there, people are going to comment on it. And yeah, maybe he didn't need to use her specifically, but his comments are not wrong. His first comments, his second comment, calling her show a minstrel show. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but he's tread very, very close to fucking racist waters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't. I mean, let me look him up. Yeah, you know. Well, there. Uh, what I will say this: I don't. I don't really follow her, like her music or anything like that. I don't know. I, I don't know her too well, but I know she's like kind of hot right now, especially in the pop, pop world, pop rap world, or whatever the case. Whatever you want to cate- how you want to characterize her music, but you would. I would say this though, Randy. There is like a. There's this thing going on where like people are like, um, they're kind of like. With the, I don't know. It's like it's okay to be obese, type of thing going on. Like you know what I mean. Like there's like there's a lot of, like some of these like musicians or entertainers. They're like, well, you know, it. And it's 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 very different from like putting out the message. It's okay to be yourself. You know what I mean? But like, uh, no, 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 it's, 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 it's it's gotten from a point from being comfortable with yourself to being comfortable with not being your best self. Kind of not not, not I hate that term, not, but not being. But, so you're saying it, it might have it might have crossed the threshold from being comfortable with yourself to being it's okay to 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 be unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like now now it's now it's sort of glorifying being unhealthy. Yeah, because I don't I don't give me one healthy overweight person, and then I'll then then I'll shut then then this doctor could would shut the fuck up. Yeah. So listen, to who he is? I looked him up. Dr. Boyce D. Watkins. He's legit. He's an American author, economist, political analyst, and social commentator. Uh, he's a visiting scholar at the Barbara Jordan uh, Leland School of Public Affairs at Texas Southern. Uh, he's all at his University of Kentucky. He's he's legit, and he uh, black guy. Yeah, from Louisville. Boyce. I know that. Yeah, uh, Boyce. I know. I knew you said it. I wasn't Boyce. sure. I, I wasn't sure because he, he was referring to her uh, her act as a minstrel show. 
I was, I was fucking, you know, you hear words like that, and you're like, oh no, is this guy gonna be one of those fucking, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. some like far right commentator who's, who's who's stepping on on, you know, <laughs> on the wrong path, down the wrong path, making comments like that. But uh, like I said I don't disagree, man. You got to worry about fucking health, health and wellness in this country. But uh, but there's no doubt that that's not the only reason she's popular. I mean, obviously millions of people love that song. I'm not one of them, but millions of people love her fucking music. So. Uh, I, I, if, it, if it was, if it was, if it was just being, if being fat got you famous, it'd be a lot of fucking, a lot of famous fat people. You know what I'm saying? Well, so take, Lizzo, take, obviously, take, Lizzo obviously has talents that, that go beyond just her weight. So listen, listen, yo, what were, were people saying this when like people like Luther Vandross was singing, or Aretha Franklin was singing, or you know Adele? Adele was an kind of like uh, Adele kind of got into it a little. Then the body, the body shaming thing. But back when Luther and, and you know and uh, Aretha Franklin, they, they weren't. No one was talking about that shit. About, no one, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah. can, can he sing? Can he not sing? You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know who who other you know kind of overweight entertainers were overweight and they became successful. I mean, it's a dozen of them, dude. Fucking Chris B- Farley, BB B- B- King. You know? Well, I yes. remember. I remember. Um, Hearing a lot about that, like with Jonah Hill and even Chris Farley, like, oh, if he loses weight, will he still be funny? It's like, man, fuck the fuck kind of shit is that? Like, you would hope that someone, like, uh, you know, he's funny because he's fat. Like, no, 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 he should be funny and not and, and be healthy. Like, you know, like let, 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 like let the guy, like people, like, yeah. people wor- like people were worried when Jonah Hill was losing weight. Like, oh, people aren't gonna want to, you know, his managers like they they might not want you for a role because you're not the funny fat guy anymore. It's like, what the fuck is like? Can I just be the funny guy? Like, you know. So I do I do yeah. hear that argument. Like, like, like you gotta. It is weird. It is weird that like now appearance, like people get used to a certain appearance for you, and once you're famous based on that appearance, they want you like to not change. You know, like, like they don't want you to lose weight. They don't want you to gain. Like you know, like people make fun of Mariah Carey because she got fat. Like she's a human being, man. People get fat. The fuck you want? You know what I'm yeah. <laughs> like, like uh, exactly. you, can, you, you can stop. You can you, you, her popularity can wane because of it. But it's weird that like people, you know, that people hate on people for getting thin. That's fucking crazy. You, you know? know who got really? Re- you know who got really really big, dude. Oh, that Camille um, Nanjiani guy? Um, nah, man. Mr. Belden from Say by the Bell, dude. Mr. Bell? Mr. Oh, Mr. Balding. Mr. Ba- is it Balden or Belden? Mr. Belding. It's Mr. Belden. He got ripped. Yeah. Mr. Belding's ripped. He ain't ripped, son. No, no. He got, he got big. Oh, he got fat. He's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's He's huge. Men get fat in their old age, man. People do. It happens. Hopefully it won't happen yeah. to me, but uh, let's see. Um... We uh, shall I don't know. see. Well, good, for, no, good, good for Lizzo. Good for Lizzo. Good for Lizzo. <laughs> She's making all that paper. Good for Lizzo. She's making hell of all paper. Oh, fuck yeah, man. So she can do it. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. In God my opinion. damn right. Yeah. All right, dude. That's all I got for this week, brother. What do you got? Anything else? What do you got coming up? Oh man. Um. Got nothing going on this week, man. This this week is this week is slow. This week is slow. So I'm just. Chilling. Is it, this is the black hole of. Uh, like everyone feel like there's a thousand memes on the internet about this, but um, you know, like how the week between Christmas and New Year's is just meaningless because no one's people go to work but no one's working. People are just waiting for New Year's or coming back from Christmas. It's like a dead, it's like a dead time, especially when there's a weekend in the middle like this. So not only is there, like, not only is the holiday, like the holidays fall midweek, so the weekend is just dead. Like you know, it's kind of like a, a no man's land. So uh, yeah, man, I haven't had shit. That's why I've been driving a lot. Yeah, man. Although I should probably hit some some stage time tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna go do go do a set later on. But as far as like anything else, I did a show like on Saturday, which was cool. I did Yuri's birthday. Oh yeah, how was, was Democracy cool. Brewing? Was that a fun time? Oh yeah, dude, fucking packed. Yo, those guys. Pfft. Yeah, I gotta get back. I gotta get back to these. I gotta get back to these shows, man. <laughs> some of these these shows are really. There's, there's some really good shows, man. Yeah. And the and some of these comics are really producing some really good shows. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna be trying to come out. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do Roar with with Jeff. It's gonna be fucking so expensive to get to Springfield, but I think mm-hmm. I, I think I'm gonna do Roar. And I'm wondering if I if I'm I'm debating whether or not I extend my trip from the 11th to like you know to come back to Boston from Springfield for a few days to like Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> Or uh, I'm going to be back uh, in New York on the 27th, which is a Monday, January 27th, for the Patrice O'Neill benefit with my brother. So I was thinking maybe I'll come to Boston the weekend before from like the 23rd to the 26th. So I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm going to do which of those two I'm going to do. But either way, uh, you got to let me know which, uh, which shows are popping because I want to I book them all while I'm in town. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll give Nothing you, I'll gets give you stage you. time like leaving Boston. <laughs> 
I'll give you I'll Last give time you I came back I had like 10 fucking I had 10 fucking Spots Just cause I came back to town Yeah Yeah Now I'll give I'll Just let me know I'll give you All, all the information you need Alright brother um, um, Yeah I got As for yeah, me Yeah come said, back yeah. Let me know and Let me know if you come to Roar and then, uh, Yeah so uh, It was like Thursday through Saturday Yep Thursday Friday, Friday Saturday uh, Roar uh, Roar uh, Comedy Club Inside the MGM Grand In Springfield I'll most likely be there um, The only question You know just cause I, I told Jeff I'd go And I don't want to bail out But You should, uh, try to come fri- you should come, probably come to Boston Friday night Well Springfield's uh, Three hours away dude Two hours but Hour and a half Two hours but, Yeah that's, but I would say I would, What I would do is Stay The Sunday Until like Wednesday So I'd book Sunday night Monday, you know, I'd book the Monday Tuesday Wednesday shows the Sunday I'd book, You know Gotcha so Gotcha I would, So like, I would you yeah. know, Do the uh, The what is it, Beacon, uh, Beacon Hill Pub and all, all Higginbottom's rooms, Beacon Hill Pub and McGreevy's, maybe do uh, maybe do the Burren, but um, we'll see. I, 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 I might not extend that trip, I might just do it at the end of January, come to the end of January and fucking kick it then, because that'll be easy, then I'll just fly to Boston, take the train from Boston to New York, so that's what I might do. All right, cool. I'm sure the people are listening are probably are bored to tears. But uh, if you want to come see me in Springfield, Massachusetts, yeah. at Springfield, <laughs> no, my next road dates will be Springfield, Massachusetts at Roar Thursday, Friday, Saturday with Old Jeff Die. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all I got coming up right now, man. I got to yeah. book a bunch of shit for the new year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's good. It's good shit. And uh, maybe, maybe I might be doing a set next week at the Wilbur. Who knows? But Ooh. I'll let you know next week. That's but, right. But, Old Godfrey's coming to town. Mm-hmm. That's right. One night only at the Wilbur, folks. Get your tickets now. Um, all right, guys. That's all I got for this week. We love you. Uh, obviously, follow us on Instagram at Ready Set Blow Podcast at Ready Valerio at Chase Abel. That's right. Make sure you guys enjoy your New Year. Have fun. Be safe. Uh, don't get too crazy. Stay and, black. Uh, <laughs> as always, baby. Stay black. Uh, yeah, we got. We'll see you guys in the New Year. We'll talk to you in, uh, in a few days. That's it for now. Peace. Peace. Podcast, you fucking bitch.